And my word, we saw some nail-biting matches in the semi-finals and finals yesterday. 140. Particularly on this streaming board between Littler and Suter and Littler and Sir. And that final being branded and regarded as the best player's 60. championship final that's ever been played. And that would be a fair shout, I think, with the averages well over 100 for both players and going all the way to a final leg before 96. Littler won 8 7. Yeah, it was a cracking oh, final, wasn't it? Was it? Lordy, wasn't we, it? We sat here licking our lips. Royal Entertainment. Yeah, it was fantastic 96. stuff from both. 111 and 109, I think it yeah. was. Yeah. Double 14 for Dobie. Game shot. And he finds it. Yeah, I think that was a uh, unfortunately for Matt there. He 145. Only hit just a steady 60. He's now, I feel, got to take this 150 out, which he isn't going to do. So Chris is going to be coming back 58. to try and clean up this 41 and take a 5-1 lead, a 5-1 commanding lead. Game shot. And that is a commanding finish. Four legs in front with a maximum of five to play. And a missed double from Littler as well for another max. And coming up on this streaming board next we've got Willie Borland against Nathan Rafferty and who can, who can forget Willie Borland's nine dart heroics at the World Championship a couple of years back against Bradley Brooks 56 the ball would have trimmed it to 5-2 this is for the match for Chris Doby 11 se segment leaves the ball for the match, the match. Hollywood Let's finish go. from Hollywood Chris Doby and a comprehensive victory for the Geordie eases through his first round tie in the last 128 as he beats Matthew Dennett with something to spare. Well, Willie thrown two great markers there and the third one going a little bit awry. 140. Looked very disappointed with it. 100. Well, the break of throw came in the first leg of the match for Rafferty. And now number 12 shot. for a beautiful finish. Well, we saw him miss the 147 narrowly. That's a good first dart. 85. Well, they'll probably be a bit disappointed with that after that first dart going into a plum treble 20. 134. Ball and piles on the pressure of a 134 to leave yourself a very comfortable two dart rod. Well, you look at this match and this has taken a turn. 54. 84. And this is for a level game. Double 12 for a level game. Game shot. Well, he's playing beautifully now, isn't he? Already. Plus these. 140. Wow, this is good stuff from Rafi. Good stuff. Just forgetting about what's gone on previously 100. for the last three legs. One hundred and thirty-five. Well, if you're going to try and break the throw again, leave eighty-six 60. after just nine darts, which is precisely what Nathan Rafferty has done. Found done the treble for the double. Game shot. Back in front. That's the way to break back. Lemon dark leg. Nathan Rafferty will be absolutely kicking himself on what a time to hit his second 180. To make him favourite for the match. 84. He's taken the throw away from Rafferty here as a lead of just over 100. 84. I was just about to say. 100. Really needs to fill it up there. Six darts now then for this 134. Just think about it a little bit. Just try and set it up. Triple 18. 58. Well, still not too much damage, Rod, I don't think. Well, he's at least one treble. He's found it. A second would be desirable. 105. For the match here. Should get a dart. Will get a dart. At 36. 58. Match dart gone. 127 and game and match. Oh yes. For 
Double eight. 119. Match start, missed a piece. One a piece. One at double 18 for Borland. One at double eight. Game shot on the match. But Willie Borland comes off the canvas to win via that double nine. Van Gilwin played little last Thursday. Who won? Thursday, Thursday. Well, it's not as if he battered him, did he? Well, what was the result? Right. No further questions. Back to the game. Van Gilwin's 85. not even playing in this tournament, so we don't know what he'd do in it. Littler is playing. Humphreys is playing. We can only describe who is actually playing in the tournament. The rest don't matter. No one cares who's not here. 130. Oh, that's oh, a beautiful shot. Delightful. This is a good... Humphreys was really disappointed with the way he played yesterday, but he's shown the qualities of a world champion during this match. Bullseye then for Vanderveld. Game shot. What a beautiful oh. dart that was, Rod. He stood back, composed himself. One hundred and thirty-five. Well, Humphreys constructing a very good leg against the throw here, leaving a two dart combination after a dozen darts thrown. Sixty. Get the break again and get the lead again. Fifty-seven to leave. Double sixteen. Game shot. Beautiful, beautiful finish at the end of a superb leg from Luke Humphreys. That was world champion class from Cool Hand Luke. I mean, Littler is now doing it on the senior stage, and it's taken these other players longer to adjust to it. That's why Littler is so extraordinary. But this young man has been hugely impressive here, not daunted one iota against the world champion, 85. who's really put it up to him. For all, and Van der Velde in charge of this leg, but don't think for one 96. moment that Humphreys has played poorly in this match and is underperforming. He may lose the match, but that won't be due to a Humphreys underperformance. 60. It'll be due to Jürgen van der Velde's brilliance. Tops. Game yes. shot. And it's 14 darts again, and that's pretty much been the theme. Well, this is great setup play here. Big 18 now for tops. 138. Well, you did say, Rod, 15, 15 or less, didn't you? Did, did, you know. 13, Connor, couldn't it? Yes. 100. Well, should have switched to the bullseye there to leave 167 from the outer ball. It may not matter. I think he'd more or less mentally given up. And that's why you don't do that. And that's the world champion making a counting error like that, a tactical error like that. Should have been on 167 here, Colin, shouldn't he? He certainly should have been, mate, yeah. If I'd have been Jürgen van der Velde there, I'd have been inclined to, to bust it and have three darts at tops again. Good point. Double five. Well, he's got to split it now. Don't miss the big number. Double two now. Game shot well, match. He's got there Kevin in the van end, Rodney. For a great win and a huge upset win, Luke Humphrey's made a mistake. of a pulled dart 60. there from Jacques Labra. Shanghai then for Ricky Evans, tops. 85. Ooh. Well, doesn't matter too much because he's only 220 points in front, 12 darts thrown and Jack Labra hasn't even hit the halfway mark. So Ricky Evans will be coming back 60. to try and clean up this 35. For well, another he's going to have to throw. utilise the dart to get to the double. There it is, to leave double 16. So he's Game got two shot. at it and only needs the one. So for the third time in the match, Rapid Ricky is in front. An interesting duel there between the former UK Open champion and last 100. evening's Players' Championship winner as Noppert takes on Littler. One hundred. One hundred and forty. Well, we're certainly seeing Ricky Evans apply the pressure here to Jacques Labra. Forty-five. And by doing so, has given himself six starts at this hundred and fourteen finish. Might only need three. Tops then.
game shot. Wow, that's superb from Ricky Evans there. 114 check out. One hundred and thirty-four. Well, great shot there from Ricky Evans, picking off two treble nineteens to leave himself the one six seven. But Jack Lara one two one double fourteen then. One hundred and seven. Bit of rush of blood there, me thinks Rodney. The missed double fourteen might be the last dart he throws. Might be the last dart he throws. Bull. Oh. One hundred and seventeen. My word. I think that was off the wire of the bullseye. Well, he can't miss the big three. Double two then. Twelve. Littler has beaten Nop at 6-4. Will Evans beat Labra 6-2? Yes, he will. Ricky Evans. And Ricky Evans wins. He's won a Euro Tour as well. 92. You thought the amount of time he's been around and the class player that he's been, he might have had a few more than that. 180. Well, great darts there from Vessel Nyman. He's 66 left after 12 darts. 140. Feeling he needs to take it out, hold his throw. Game well, shot. Two fabulous darts there, treble 10, double 18. Then it wouldn't be the match, but you'd feel it was the match. 180. But the break looks very unlikely now, or less likely now. Yeah. 123. Gurney has still got down to a more than manageable finish. And Diamond's 58. third maximum didn't leave him on an outshot. He couldn't leave himself on an outshot. He was too far adrift. Bullseye will be the target if he can find the treble 20, which he can't. 58. Well, big shot here, Rod, for Vessel Nyman, this 105. In the context of this match, huge. He'd fancy Gurney for the 72 if this doesn't go. And it won't go. Wild attempt to treble 19. So Daryl Gurney here on 72. You would 81. think he ought to get at least one dart at a double and he'll hope for two. All sorts of choices here. Two single 20s leaves one dart at double 16. Good yes, shot. and Daryl Gurney, and you may well have heard the reaction from the super chin. Yes, and he knows how important that was. Now he doesn't need to go for the 170 finish. And it's irrelevant now because he can't. 50. Well, leaves 120 after that. It wasn't the best setup shot, but it does leave Shanghai on the 20s. And Nyman here really needs at least two trebles to retain an interest in the match. 60. Well, six darts at 120 now for the super chin. 60. Well, just keep, keeping the three darts straight was a minimum requisite to leave 60. And we might see the famous Daryl Gurney flat dart here that he has developed when requiring 60 to stop the first dart blocking them. And he can get above that one. He's worked on that technique, which is shot and the very smart and well done as well. Daryl Gurney, good performance. The break came late in the match. I'm going to say this, Rod. I sometimes think young Adam, so he's looking sort of like a bit sort of like... 180. Disorientated now. He's just... I just sometimes think he needs to try something a bit different. I just think he bogs himself down a little bit. I mean, six darts in and he's still on 400. What is he going to be on after 60. nine? He's still going to be on 340. He's nearly 300 points behind Gary Anderson. Yeah, this is an ordinary Game leg, shot. and the leg is over, with Gavlas still on 340, would you believe? That's as lopsided a leg as you'll see on the professional darts tour. 
prolifically hitting 140, 140, 140. No, it's just 180. Just serves it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Gablas's first. Yeah. Sorry, and I had one the day before. My pleasure. Anderson's average 111.6, and Gavlas, after that maximum, has hiked his to 81. So a 30 point discrepancy in the averages here, halfway through the match. Well, Anderson hopes it'll be halfway through in any regard. So you talk about darting dominance, but this is it. Well, Rod, for the second leg on the trot, Gary Anderson is on a very 97. simple two dart finish for back to back 11 darters. Well, double 16 then. Yeah, 14 spots, yeah. Well, he thought he did the double there. That would have been a bad mistake. Double 16. Game shot. Yeah. Back to back 11 darters for the Flying Scotsman. Very different proposition here. Yeah, I think the, the main fact in this match, Rod, has been the power scoring of Gary Anderson. It's been relentless. 15, 17, 11, 11, 18 so far. 44. And like you said, that was a very erratic last dart there from Adam Gavlas. 1-2-1 one, one then for the match result. Bullseye! He hasn't gone 89. for it. Well, sensible stuff there from Gary, I suppose. He taunted you, Colin, didn't what, he? Teased well, you. Why have a 12 dart on the ball when you can have a 13 dart and double 16? 96. Why not? He's had three maximums, Anderson. He's averaging 107. Case and he's won by Gary six Anderson. legs to nil. A whitewash win. A totally dominant display from the Flying Scotsman. Gavlas had no answer. And Anderson romps through with a 6 nil success. Final average just over 100. Now it's 3-1 to Barton's. And he's got every chance here of going ahead 4-1 himself. 140. Well, this is the kind of leg that the pros drool about, isn't it, Colin? 81 left after nine. Certainly is, That's mate. a proper professional 97. leg of darts. Gives you every chance of an 11 or 12 darter, and that's really considered the barometer for world-class play. Double 13. Double 13. 55. Well, is the same going to happen here, though, Rod? Andy Barton's three 140s. And hasn't cleaned up. Josh Rock had three 140s earlier. Game shot. And never cleaned up. And parity. Having been pegged back at three all has regained control of the match. 140. He can stay there if he desires. Or he can go for the bullseye. Which would have left 32. But he tidies up to leave tops, fair enough. Not yeah. a strategy to be criticised with his opponent out of finishing range. He could do what he likes from there, Colin, couldn't he, really? That's exactly right. So tops here then for Andy Barnes for a solid holder throw. Double 10 now. Game yeah, shot. Yeah, that's a good 14 dart leg there from Andy Barton's. All the pressure now firmly on Joss's shoulders. He's got to hold, he's got to break, and he's got to hold again. 58. And the way this match has been playing out, you have to say he might not be able to do 58. that. 58. Well, Barton's missed a lot of darts, a double five on the trot, in fact, in legs three, sorry, five, six. Sixty. Well... He's not exactly running towards the line, is he? 78. L opportunity here for Josh Rock if Andy Barton's doesn't hit a red bit, but he has. 100. Well, he's left to finish, albeit a tricky one. Two trebles to double, and the double being double 19. And Rock is on 150, so... What can AB do here? 80. Two dark combo is left. Rock will not go out on 150. 100. But will leave 50. So for the match, 20 for tops. And a match start. Game shot. And Andy, Andy Barton's Barton. with a deserved win.
He was the better player there, no question about that. And Rocky is knocked out, and the Belgian goes through. Andy Bartons gets home. The final score, six legs to four as he goes through to round four. Bartons beats Rock. And Cammy can't take out the 170. So Peter Wright then. 100. With a two dart combo for an 11 dart leg and a 3 1 lead. Double nine. Double yeah. nine. 63. That far away from a 3 1 lead. He may get another go. He may, because now Menzies is having to go 16 for double nine. Same target. 52. Similar scenario was in play, wasn't it? Yeah, well, this would be a big, big break for Pete Wright. It's a great marker. Straight down that barrel. Well, pulled it inside. 10. A reprieve for Cameron Menzies. And the cami cam would have picked up the Scotsman's reaction in the background. There was all sorts going on, and Cameron Menzies, I think, judging by his... His hand gesture there thinks he's stolen the leg, but it was a hold of throw, that's all. Plenty of chance here for Cammy Menzies. Well, that's a great start to try and break in that throw rod. Puts him in control of this leg now. Peter does need to hit a max, really, and that's a great start to a max. Even better. 140. Ooh. Oh, Peter right there searching for one three three to 46. lead tops. Opens the door to Cameron Menzies at this one two three. Sixteen for Bull. Ball's eye is then for a break of throw. Ninety eight. Number 19. Bullseye for Peter Wright for a hold of throw. Great oh, shot. what a great dart that was. 127 out from Peter Wright. Well, Cameron Menzies has just missed the ball. Oh, is that an opening for Peter Wright? Tricky little finish is 107. 90. 107 it is then for Menzies. So Wright will have 131 for the match if this does not go. It could go. Double 16 says it does. And 91. In flight, it may have felt that it was very close to the target, and indeed it was. Wright wants 131. 51 first. He can go tops, tops from there. Tops, tops. Game what a finish from the Peter showman Wright. Snakebite. Peter Snakebite Wright finishes off with some fireworks on 131. And Cameron Menzies is warm in his congratulations. The two Scots, it's Wright who goes through. Menzies has to offer his hand of congratulations because Peter Wright has won. And he's through to the quarterfinals. Peter Wright beats Cammy Menzies, six legs to two. Raymond must sense the chance. It's only a hole, but it would give him a two-leg lead. Oh, now Raymond strays. 24. Yeah, grit of the teeth there from Barney as he walked towards the ball. He knew that was an opportunity. One more dart. Oh, Barney comes back. Well, to hold his throw here, Raymond Van Barnwell needs tops for a 3-1 lead. Double ten, as both of them are faffing on the doubles. Twenty. Well, it was a high-quality leg until they got to the doubles. And then it really has degenerated. Nine. He didn't like the lie, and what he didn't like then manifested itself into the deflection into the single. And Barney now... Wants double five. Ten. What is happening well. here at the end of this leg? Well, well, well. Don't miss the big number, Gary Anderson. Double four, then. Game shot. 
Well, eventually, 20 dart leg. But we have been saying that earlier, Rod Studd, the way that Gary Anderson has been playing, would we have said that? As Anderson is in this one. Barney, a bit of head shaking going on now as he can't find the treble because Gary Anderson is two darts away from extending the lead. Double top, double top, would he go for the treble? Double top, double top, but a safe attempt at the double top, I think. 60. And then another single leaves him tops, and that's okay because Barney is way back. One hundred and four. So that was well managed by Gary Anderson because going at double top too high would have caused a problem. And now he's back at it and double ten. Game shot. And Gary Anderson with a surge takes three consecutive legs to lead Raymond. Event fifty. So that would be twenty four four to Anderson over four matches against four different opponents, wouldn't it? Which is did you work that all out on your own? By any metric, is superb. 130. And against this quality of field, is sensational. Yeah. 43. He had a great year on the Players' Championship last year, didn't he, as well? Here he is for the match. 75 left. Still on. Bull. 51. Oof. Would have been some way to finish, wouldn't it, after the first errant error? Well, Barney, now this 107 hits the treble 19, 18, double 16 to stay in the match. 76 last time and ended up on the bullseye. Now he's ended up on tops. And Gary 75. Anderson misses another match dart. Can't finish Barney off just yet. But this time, three more incoming. 60. And this should be the coup de grace from the Flying Scotsman. Game show and it is. Gary, and Gary Anderson. Anderson's rollicking run in Players' Championship 2 continues as he's too strong for RVB. In the battle of the old veterans, the old superstars of darts, they're still current superstars. Gary Anderson is through to the semi final. He beats Barney 6 3. Seven. And that will be for a two leg lead. And then it starts to get interesting. Well, we've already seen him take out this 87 we have. Check out a couple of legs ago. In two darts, Colin. Not this time. It'll take him three. Double five. It'll take him more than three if he gets a go at it. Now, Ryan, sir, what's the choice of double? It's tops. It eludes him again. It eludes him again. Over pitching, under pitching. Well, double five for Martin Lupin, which he duly hits. That's a great breaker throw there from Martin Lupin. And not only a breaker throw, it's three legs on the spin now. Opportunities again, Rod, if it keeps failing to go in. Back comes Martin Lupin with yet another max. Fifty-eight. So this would be a real biggie. For Martin, and it's on here. Double 18 Seven. is his choice, but he can't find that one. Ryan Searle, suddenly in a leg that he's behind. We haven't seen too many of them. Game shot. And he finds the bull's eye, disguised by the other flight, but it was in. And all those trials and tribulations on tops are forgotten as he pins the smallest target on the board for a 1 2 3 checkout. Just gave Ryan Searle that little bit more breathing space, Colin, didn't it? It did, yeah. You're exactly right. 64. It was frustrated here, Rod, that great one, two, three checkout. And he's, he's making very hard work of this leg to try and keep the throw and get parity of four legs 100. all. The dart on the deck didn't help, though, Colin, no, did it? If you no. take 60 off his score here, that's 74 left from here, not one, three, four. That's a big difference. Well, look Although at this. these aren't helping, are they? 60. Good recovery last dart, but... He will have first poke at a finish, but Lukeman could leave a single darter or two darter here. 59. It's not great, but it is still a three-figure finish. 16 then for tops. Game wow. shot. He's back in on that tops, Rod. He knew it was there somewhere, Colin. He's found it. And it's level again. 
So went out on the one, two, three on the bullseye. Leveled up one, and now hits a maximum. And you just feel that maybe Ryan Searle has got the edge again now. 42. Well, we've come down to a best of five now, Rod. 180. Well, there were nine darters galore yesterday. Now Ryan Searle has gone maxi, maxi. 125. A one for one finish here for Ryan. Eighty two. In the context of the match, to lead the two data is probably satisfactory to Searle. But Martin Lukeman. Oh yes, Martin. Tops for Searle. Double ten. Oh, and 39. these are costly missed starts at double, you would feel. Having gone 180, 180 to start the leg, the nine dart bid did not materialise, and Lukeman can steal this one. Double top for Martin. No, oh, he can't find the bed. So, double ten, double five. This is a bit of an agonise. Will he bust that? Well, he should do. He should do, shouldn't he? No he score. has done. Yeah. No score, the call. Ryan Searle has to wait and hope he doesn't hear game shot the call. Double ten, the double that caused him a problem or two then. Same scenario for Lukeman. Up, away, and 15. too much of a readjustment. So Ryan Searle back to that double ten. He busted his score last gotcha. time and gets the lead back. Well, that was an edgy ending to leg nine. And it could be an important ending to leg nine because Ryan Searle has got himself back in front here. And uh, Luke Littler went out. Yeah. And Ryan Searle, within touching distance now of a second Players' Championship final in two days. 133. What a visit that is, by the way, to leave double 12. So Martin Lukeman knows he cannot afford to miss here. Game shot. And he hasn't missed. Full credit to Martin Lukeman. Makes Ryan Searle serve it out. Five turns to the board for Ryan Searle, so he's on course here, isn't he? And he's saying to Lukeman, you can only have four turns. 58. And Martin Lukeman hasn't left to finish after three, so Searle has got two trips to the board here from 166. 85. Leaves Eddie one. And that will be for the match when he returns. Treble 18. 138. Would have been a Brahma to leave 32. So two, a double 12, this is for the match for Ryan Searle. 57. Two match starts gone, and now Martin Lukeman, who stayed neat and tidy and kept close order, has got the chance. Only one dart at a double for Martin, though, and he's got to hit it, you feel. And he has. Kudos to Martin Lukeman to level up the match at six apiece. About to say there, Rod, what a time to hit a max. You won't be too bothered about a 135, though. 87. Serve ahead, but only by six, so it's almost irrelevant. Oh, look at Martin Lukeman. One that is incredible at this time of the match and this time of a semi final to give him a two dark combination to win the semi final. 140. Well, he's left 80, which he's failed to check out twice already in the match, but he may not get a shot. Double 18. Double 9. 37. Oh, the agony. The agony for Martin Lukeman. Now Ryan Searle. Two at double 10. Game shot. And Ryan Searle Ryan. finally gets past Martin Lukeman. They both missed match starts before Ryan Searle. Staggered over the line and into the final of Players' Championship 2. He wins by 7-6. Last time they played at this stage, three years ago, Sir won 7-0. It wasn't anything like that this time. 7-6 to Ryan Searle and he's into the final. But over the Pennines in Wigan, this is a longer match in the final. Can he start with a maxi and end with a big fish? One Doesn't go for it. Come on, Ryan. Well... That was, I would have gone for it, but Joe you know what? That's a respectful thing. One but he's mile. that far in front that I thought he might have had a little go at it. But sure, it doesn't matter. 
It's That's why he's up there and I'm here. It's a different in the ice cold atmosphere of a 30. pro tour final as he misses the three at the double at the end of that setup. Bit different if you're on the big stage at the Winter Gardens, say the crowd roaring you on and demanding the bullseye finish. Demand it! So would have felt under pressure to have gone for the bull, I'm sure, then in front of a big crowd. Now he's left double one. What's going Eight. on? Could have had Colin. <laughs> A 170 finish, and we may get a two finish, although Anderson will strike on tops, or try to, and has Pretty done. Sure. Well, what a ridiculous opening leg from Ryan Searle's perspective. 180 start, turned down the 170, ended up waiting on double one, didn't get a shot, and has lost his throw. Well, we have two treble 17s 13. tops here. Oh. 66 left. 16 for Bull. If it's a treble, it'll be double nine. We saw Searle take this way. out against Lutman. Same way. On the Bull. But doesn't 84. get the same finish as his opponent in this match did in his previous match. Yep. 72. 72 left. 36, 36. Oh, what a finish. We talk about sketchy finishing. Then you talk about sensational finishing from Ryan Searle. Oh, that's why we call him the Pearl. 2-2. Two, two. 67. That was epic. Oh, 132. Ryan, so, with two trebles on the visit, leaves 102. Treble 18 was on old treble, 20 for double nine. 129. So near, he's been narrowly out on two three-figure out shots in two legs, Gary Anderson. Tops. Game oh, shot. and Ryan Searle now with the 102. Well, Gary Anderson has had a missed ball and a missed double. The 15-leg contest. Oh, lovely darts. 180. Beautiful darts from Gary Anderson. Gary's third 180 of this contest. Both had Three 180s apiece. 81. The only difference being Ryan Searles had a 129 and a 102 checkout. Well. One well. His fourth 180 of the match. Dare we say it, Rod? Sets up the perfect nine dart game. Well, I dare say it. It sets up a perfect nine dart game. He now wants double 12 for the perfect nine. 129. Well, Gary. The second time he missed double 12 against Peter Wright yes, in the semi-finals. Gary, exasperated. He two was tantalizingly of, close. Two in the space of, say, 20, 25 minutes, Rod. Game shot. Ten dart will have to do for the Flying Scotsman. He hit the treble five. I thought there was enough room for the treble 20 bed, but looked up at it and quickly switched down to the 19s. 100. Well, that was a perfect first dart for Gary 140. Anson. Not the 180 that we expected, but still a fantastic 140. But back comes Ryan Searle. 140. Gary Anderson is pitching this first dart perfectly. More often than not. Not on this occasion. But as you said, Colin, just finding it just 92. below that top wire where he wants it. Top wire of the treble. 20, of course, I refer mm. to. And then he can follow it to some tune, can't he? And he's been doing that beautifully in this match. He'd love to do that right here and now. Well, he's got to find a treble. 82. And he does. Last start, treble 19. On a finish of 134, but how much pressure will that 134 be under? 140. Quite a bit, me thinks, Rod. 54. Tops, tops. That's where they all do it now. That's Thanks, the Scott. way to do it. Gary Anderson, treble 18, tops, tops. And that could be the big body blow in this final. The second player's championship of 2024. 58. And we'd go from 17-year-old Luke Littler to 53-year-old Gary Anderson in 24 hours if he converts this 64 lead into a win. Both ends of the darting spectrum. 
But Gary Anderson is certainly not ready to be pensioned off just yet. Don't you worry about that. 60. Still loves to compete. Oh, look at this now. 117 scored, yeah. Double 16. Game what shot. a finish that is, by the way. For Ryan Searle with his back up against the wall. It's his third ton plus out of this final. And it trims the lead to just a solitary leg. But Anderson has the darts in this leg, which is the 12th. But Anderson has the darts in this leg, which is the 12th. Of a possible 15. 180. And that's another maximum for Gary Anderson. We called it Rod, didn't you? We said just a couple of minutes ago that if Gary Anderson puts that dart the top wire... 64. There's a very good chance he's going to fill it all up. He's put another one there. Dare we dream again. 180. Oh, wow, he's in there again, Rod. Madness. 139. Well, wow. one one. two times he's missed the dart at double 12, and this time he misses the seventh dart. Well, he's gone from 63. the sublime to the ridiculous, but he just saves the turn with a treble 19, but it shouldn't matter in this leg. 100. 78 points separating him from a two-leg lead. Double 12. Can't hit it. Can Great hit shot. it this time. Gary Anderson leads Ryan Searle 7 5. One more leg for the Flying Scotsman is required. 180. Back comes Anderson. Wow. This has just been. A score and frenzy from 46. both of these guys. Gary Anderson now. 8 one he's in this final. So we say nine. We will say nine. Three legs already in this match, in this final rod, that Gary Anderson's 59. gone back to back 180s. Can he finish it the dream way? It's there. And Gary Anderson to win the title on a nine dart leg. 117. Oh, Gary Anderson. Son of a gun. <laughs> he wants to have some stern words with that double 12, doesn't he? He wants to take that double 12 outside and give it a stern talking to. 80. But in the end, it's going to be all smiles for Gary Anderson. He won a player's title, the last one, player's championship, finally won was in October last Game year and he's in the winner's Gary circle Anderson. again Gary Anderson a sensational day's darts he's been the dominant dartist here in Wigan all afternoon Gary Anderson playing at the very peak of his powers and very much a deserved winner of Players Championship 2 in Wigan as he beats Ryan Searle his mate and practice partner by eight legs to five Anderson brilliant all day and nothing that Ryan Searle could do but shake hands and congratulate his old friend. And Gary Anderson, a deserved winner there. That was brilliant, not just in the final, but all day.